Hello everyone, this is Dial 20 and welcome to episode 99 of Dial 20's Let's Play series, uh, where today I'm going to take a look at a brand new mod, one I've never played with before, don't know nothing about it, other than it looks pretty cool. That's about all I know. <laughs> I don't know anything else. Um, we're taking a look at, and I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, Mahusukai? Maybe? Uh, is the name of the mod. I don't know a lot about it, but it looks cool. Um... That's literally all the information I have for you at this point. I don't know anything about it, and it looks cool. That's all I know. Uh, but we're going to get into it today. What I'm going to do is check out uh, the Knowledge Compendium, which I assume is going to guide me through uh, a lot of what you can do in the mod, uh, and then uh, see what it has to offer. That's it. That's that's what today is. And I'm going to do like I've been doing with other mods. Like, I'm going into it fresh. I've not done a lot of research. Uh, what I'll probably do is play with it by itself, see how the, the documentation is, see how... The mod plays, and if it makes, you know, basic sense, and if I struggle or run into problems, I'll do some research between episodes and come up with something cool. Does that sound good? All right, so let's jump into this mod today to see what it's all about. All right, so to get started in this mod, we need to make one of these, a knowledge compendium. And, oh, that's cool. It has kind of its own little approach. I don't know what this does. What does this do? Nothing. Okay. Uh, we're figuring it out. So I'm going to go ahead and just assume that this is the order that we want to read things in. So let's start with this. Uh, Amado Sakai simply is a magic user, and congrats, you are one of such magic user. Uh, let's first see how to draw a circle in blood. It's easy. Just take damage and quickly use the keybind M to draw a circle on the floor. If successful, you'll see a blood circle on the ground and a mana bar somewhere on your screen. Note, there is a dagger to damage yourself if you prefer. All right. And then, oh, when I when I mouse wheel through the book, and does this bring me back to the homepage? Okay, cool. So when you, when you change pages, now we're on the mana, then performing magic, then attune gems. That's this, mana, performing magic, attune gems. Got it. Uh, using mana increases your maximum mana capacity over time. It's like exercising. You will naturally recover some mana over time, depending on how full your hunger is. Sleeping will regen a good chunk of your mana, and sleep is important, so sleep often. Sweet. Okay, cool. Uh, so there's a dagger. Easy peasy. And then let's see. Controls, keybinds, category... Because I don't know if it is actually M. Draw Mahujan. Keybind M. Okay, cool. I guess we'll find out what these things mean in a bit. But for now... I guess I could probably just take damage from mobs or whatever, but... Oh, nope, that opens your map. <laughs> it sure does. Uh, let's see what N is bound to. That's a lot of things, but... Because N would be cool. Mechanism item mode switch? Nah, we don't need to do that. All right, cool. And then category this. And we'll make it N to draw. Oh, hello. Cool. And look, there's your top left. Sweet. 100 out of 100. Okay, I did the thing. Step one, complete. Step two, performing magic. Uh, we need a few things. Mana, optionally, depending on the recipe. A cloth, a blood circle, and three powdered catalysts. If the recipe is for a scroll, you'd put the cloth down first and then draw a blood circle on top. Otherwise, simply put the circle on the floor. Take your powdered catalyst and right-click the circle to add them. If you craft an attuner with a diamond or emerald, you can get an attuned gem. These gems will store mana for you if you are right-click while holding the gem. Spells will automatically draw from any gems in your person. Okay, so that would be these guys, I guess. It looks like diamond is better than emerald. Looks easy enough to me. So we've got an attuner, and then we can make an attuned diamond. Let's see how fast I regen mana. Oh look, so that drains it. Okay, that's cool. And then look, I got a I got a boost. Oh, that's slow. That is slow. Now apparently sleeping will help. Now I'm curious if sleeping through the day into the night speeds this up up here. But we'll see what happens. It did. It gave me plus 50. Okay, that's not bad. And then I presume sleeping there. Now, isn't there a blood magic -y thing? There's usually a ritual you can do. Like a... Where's, where's the where's the blood magic-y? Because that lets you sleep... A, well, it skips the night a little bit better. A little bit faster. Right now, we have to wait at least a few minutes for... See, we still can't sleep. But this one, there was something for passing the night. Like, imperfect ritual stones? Maybe that's not implemented yet? I 
Uh, let's see. Some of these have been implemented in Arcane Ash recipes. Day-night arrays. Oh, there you go. Time-based arrays are straightforward arrays that control the time of day. Okay, cool. New Dawn, True Twilight. So I guess two Lapis with an Arcane Ash. Let's try it out real quick. Well, I'll sleep through the night, and then we'll try the Arcane Ash to make it night again. So it's just Lapis, Lapis. What I always liked about the... Um, the, the imperfect ritual is how fast it was. Like, instant click and boom, it's nighttime. That will apparently make it night. Anything happening over here? I don't even know where the... Oh, there it is. Hello. Oh, neat. Okay. And then is it instantly night? And, like, I can sleep now or what? Yeah, no, that is instant night and I can sleep. So that's kind of cool. Okay. Well, that's good to know. And then we stored 100 in our attuned diamond here, right? And then we could... Do that, and then we could make it nighttime again with Lapis. Not quite as fast as I would like it to be. Oh, that's neat. Look at that. Oh, that's cool. Look at it go. Woo. And then sleep. And then that'll make it... Yeah. Okay. And that's plus 50? Is that what it is? Okay. So I get roughly plus 50 when we sleep through the night. Okay, that's not bad. Just learning the basics of Mahusokai. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I'm so in trouble when YouTube comments hit this video. All right, not terrible. Not terrible. There are seven catalysts representing each of the known categories of magic. Powdered catalysts are created by taking a hammer or a mortar and pestle and smashing these catalysts. Uh, all right, boundaries, displacement, projection, exchange, mystic intelligent, mystic eyes. Okay. Boundaries deal with AoE effects centered on a magic circle. Displacement spells deal with teleportation magic. That's cool. All right. Ley lines. There's a lot to read here. I'm going to read a little bit off camera and come back. All right. I think, let's see. I have a rough fish idea of what I need to do. Um, I'm not super familiar, but we're going to make a mortar and pestle, which needs a pestle and a mortar. And now we have a mortar and pestle. And then I need some eyes, I believe. I want to say three. And we do this with them? Sweet. Okay, cool. That was neat. I actually only needed three of those, but that's all right. I'm sure we'll use them elsewhere. Uh, so that wasn't so bad. I'm reading through the book. It It's very good at telling you what specific things do, but it's not great about progression and like how to go through stuff all right so let's try performing our first magic and the first one i want to do that i've chosen to check out is the mystic eyes of face sight basically it looks like there's ley lines throughout the world and using this spell will allow me to see them as well as see the fey which are like uh some kind of entity or something that'll be part of the mod later I, it's a little the book is very good at like i said telling you what each thing does but there's not like a do this and then do that and then do this kind of progression it's meant to i guess kind of figure it out yourself which is totally cool um so yeah there's definitely some stuff to see here so to perform magic um so let's see first off face sight requires cloth okay so performing magic uh you place the cloth down first and then a blood circle so we're gonna need cloth which is made with wool. I'll just get a few of these to get going, right? So my understanding is we put down the cloth first. So that's, this is cool, but I'm gonna get rid of that. We're gonna put down the cloth first, then that, and then one, two, three. And then what? If the recipe is for a scroll, you'd put down the cloth first, then draw the blood circle on top of it, and put the circle on the floor, take your powder cows, and right click the circle to add them. Okay, I've added them. Now what? Not that, that's for sure. Right click. Oh, hey, there you go. Right click with an empty hand. Scroll of Mystic Eyes of Face Sight. Now, we'll note that in the book, it tells us that Face Sight requires 100 mana, which is pretty much what you start with. Um, We've gotten up to 102, which is cool. There's definitely some spells that cost in the thousands of mana. So we'll see what happens. So I guess I'm going to go up here and cast the spell with a right click. 
Okay. Oh, hey, hold on. No, wait, there's something here. Look at that. Okay. Uh, is this something? Do we feel like this might be something? This might be something. Does it look like it kind of consolidates here? I wonder. I have the face sight for a few more seconds at least. Wow, that does not last long, does it? No. All right, so at a guess, I'm going to say it's somewhere around here-ish, right? So what if we had an 8x8x8 eight by eight by eight depth of 3? Does that sound cool? Now, I suspect, uh, if I may suspect things, that it's going to be down here somewhere? And I assume that it's not something that my destruction gadget can destruction. Let's undo that. I want to move you back one. Oh, yeah, you couldn't undo because of water. That's fine. Let's see. I just want it to be still centered here. That seems pretty cool. All right, so now what I'd want to do is recast that spell, right? So let's give that a shot. What I want to do is place down the cloth first, then this, then place down that, and then do three of these, and then right click with an empty hand, and I've got the spell. All right, so it is far deeper than this, right? Oh, hello, we found the thing. That must be the ley line that we've been looking for. Hello, I found you. That's neat, kinda. I like that. Let's clear out all this stuff with a depth of one. Hello. I hear things. I heard a thing. Did anybody else hear a thing? Because I totally heard a thing. I think that's the Fae. Uh, so we're going to need more Eyes of Ender. Uh, and more Mortal and Pestle action here. This, this, these three, and then that. And then activate it. And there should be some Fae nearby. You think that's these guys? They could be Fae. Yeah, they are. Look. There they are at the top. Nice. Okay. Well, that's cool. Now, apparently, being near a ley line causes your mana to regen faster? I want to say. Oh my, there's even more Fae. They are really uh, accumulating here, aren't they? That's cool. And there's all different colors of them? That's awesome. Is my mana going up by two at a time? Is that what's happening here? I feel like these Fae are loud, though. Let's do... Is that better? I think so. Maybe. Yeah, so definitely going up. Bring it around 15%. Doesn't have to be perfect. But at the same time, it does. That's definitely a little better. So, all right, we found a ley line. Well, that's cool. All right, so I think I got something here. Um, first off, let's do this again. And you might notice I don't quite have the mana for this, but I do have it in here. So 165 and 22. So if I cast this, see we used up mana in the thing. Now I'm pretty sure I can kill these Fae. Okay, that worked. And I got Fae Essence. Uh, and, and doing magic near here will attract them. You can also breed them, from what I've read. I feel kind of bad killing them. But it's clearly part of the mod. Boy, are they tiny and hard to hit. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's, it's definitely part of the mod to, to do that. 
Now I think I can get Mystic Code for a Sorcery and Mystic Code. These are two items that can hold scrolls. So the Mystic Code is an item that holds three stacks of scrolls. Shift right click opens the inventory. The keybind switches between the scrolls. Clicking or holding right click uses the currently selected scroll. More importantly, there's Mystic Code First Sorcery. Uh, is a variant of the Mystic Code, which has a set durability, but also allows for the reuse of scrolls it contains. Sounds interesting. Uh, so to get that, we're going to need Powdered Diamond and some of these things here. So then here's a question now, right? Can I then do this, this, one, two, three, this, Shift right click this dude. Put the scroll in here. Hey, that's really cool. Look at that. It has the it has the thing on the plate. That's nifty. I like that. I like that a lot. Okay, so now if I made this scroll and right clicked this dude now. Oh, that's neat. And then it lets me cast that spell kind of without having to remake it all the time, which is super useful. I like that. Okay, that's cool. That is that is definitely cool. That is very cool all around. See, but we're getting low on the mana that we've stored. Uh, so I have to find a better way to like get mana, which I think I read there's something I can do about that. Um, yeah. Interesting. There's a lot of things we can do. All right, so it looks like there's a spell, a boundary spell, cloth optional, uh, called Boundary of Life Drain, which slowly drains health from nearby mobs in a range of 10. For every health drained, health, hunger, or mana is restored to the caster in that order. So it will heal me, and then it will feed me, and then it will restore my mana. So if I'm at full health, it will always restore my mana, right? And I'm pretty much always at full health and hunger, so that shouldn't be a problem. Um, there's a bunch of spells here, and we'll take a look at some of them as we go through. Uh, but I remember there was a couple others as well. Now here's another interesting one, Durability Exchange. When placed on the floor, the circle will convert the durability of items on top of it into mana. Alternatively, it can do so from a chest underneath it as well. So put items on top or put chest underneath. Um... So that's going to be a powdered diamond and two powdered emeralds. So powdered diamond and two powdered emeralds. Okay, that should be cool. Powdered diamond and two powdered emeralds. Oh, look, it even says durability exchange on it. Oh, that's cool. I like that. So now what if I get, I don't know, an iron sword? I'm just going to throw it. doesn't I don't care that it has Leech and Sharpness on it. Now, is that going to do thing? Oh, hey, look at my mana. Holy cow, that was that worked, right? Didn't that work? That quite worked, I would say. Now, now, if I break the block under it, is that a problem? It is not. Good. So then I can put a chest there. I can put you in the chest. And now I can fill this up, and he will drain durability. Oh, that's cool. Now I have to find something with, like, a stupid amount of durability. Like, a really stupid amount of durability. Right? Man, it fills up your mana fast, too, doesn't it? It really does. Um... Fifteen. So it drains ten durability at a time. Is what it would look like to me. So I'm at zero. Okay. It looks like it drains like a bunch of durability and then spikes my mana up. That's what it looks like to me. So that's kind of neat. I like, okay, that's different. That's a different approach. Uh, we're gonna have to find something with like a really stupid amount of durability. Like really stupid. I'm assuming that it's like 
the vanilla durability thing. So like Tinker's Tools probably won't be a good route to go. Um, but if we found some kind of sword with like really good durability. Um, these are the netherite tool upgrade things. Like they might, I don't know. I have no idea. Cool. And then I should be able to use this to recast this thing and see. Oh my goodness, look how many of these there are. Do I feel bad killing these things? I kind of do. I'm not going to lie. A little bit. A little bit. Like, it, clearly it's part of the mod, but I'm like, I don't want to have to kill those things. They're kind of cool, right? I do like the I do like the visuals on there. That's really neat looking. And then we can just, like, really charge up some mana. So I think a big part of it is having a lot of mana, you know, attuned, right? That's pretty cool. Okay, so that's nifty. Let's see what else we can do in this mod. So now here's a question. What if I set up this boundary of life drain thing in my mob spawner room? Would that be a cool thing to do? Maybe the one that's doing blood magic? Yeah. Two powdered iron and a powdered emerald. So two powdered iron and a powdered emerald. And theoretically, we should be able to do this. Actually, let me get up to my blood magic-y area. And let's just turn the lights on for a sec. Let the mobs that are in there and currently are not witches, right? Maybe not exist anymore. Can we do that? Especially the creeper. I would like the creeper to be gone. That works. That works. All right, so then what I would want to do, I didn't have to do the thing because they hurt me. Aha. Uh -huh. uh, and then referencing the book, it's two iron and an emerald. Sweet. So is that, like, working now? I assume? I guess... I guess it's working? It's hard to tell because I've got the other ritual thing going on, right? Now, I don't know that doing this ritual at the ley lines even means anything. Uh, but what I'm going to do is remove this real quick. And I'm going to drain my mana here. And we'll see what happens. So we do have a net loss of mana going on. So that means the spell is working. Uh, I'm going to put this thing back in here, the sword, because I would like a net gain of mana. Am I not understanding this correctly? The boundary of life of drain life slowly drains health from nearby mobs in range of 10. For every health drained, health, hunger, or mana is restored to the caster in that order according to the caster's needs. It drains five mana from the caster every one second. I feel like it's not a great... I mean, it might be. I can't tell. I can't tell if it's like a good... What I could do... What I could do is if I put a lever on this, it stops the thing from running, right? Now, if I put lights on... Are they still taking damage from me or from that thing? Don't actually know. I'm pretty sure a redstone signal disables blood magic stuff, right? Pretty sure that's true. Uh, do do do. All rituals respond to a redstone signal, so sticking a lever on the side of the master ritual stone is a good way to deactivate it. You can combine this knowledge with some of the useful information. So, in theory, these dudes are getting hurt by my ritual thing now. That's kind of cool. And then with the lights off, we'll see how quickly it kills them, but I suspect pretty quickly. That's definitely faster than it was going before with just the blood magic ritual, I think. So if I turn you back... And if we check this, we should see that we are, where's my sigil? 
We're good there, but see how this is going down and he's not going up again? There's no LP going into that altar right now. But if I turn the lever off, so I think I think the Mahutsukai thing is working. So now we should be getting a plus to LP. Right? And if we wanted to, we could totally be like, hey, if this is full, emit a redstone signal up there. Right? Um because right now we have a, a light thing going up. So if you're at 10 buckets, you turn on the lights. Which pretty much never happens because the ritual itself drains LP to keep running. But I mean, that's cool. And if you look, my 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 mana up top left here is going up. Because I am doing things, right? Like I'm casting spells. I think it's this, this constantly running thing. Alright, I'm getting the feel for this. I'm getting the idea of it. It's neat. It's neat. It's cool. Um... You know, I think the key is, is 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 maintaining your mana. It's basically like, it's not... So there's things that like have a consistent draw of mana and you want to consistently charge your mana to keep them going, right? Uh, I should set up some kind of way to easily teleport over here. So this is a big one because this really generates a lot of mana. I just need to find a better durability thing. Um... I wonder if something with, like, unlimited durability would work. Isn't there that Eternal Stella thing? I've not played at all with Forbidden and Arcanus. Pretty sure we have Ex-Petrified Orbs. Yeah, we have a lot of them. Yeah, see, now my, my sword's gone. I'm assuming I have a net loss of mana. And I'm not sure what'll happen when I run out of mana. Does the, does the ritual thing stop? I don't know. It may be stopped. Cool. I think we're good still. It's just that it doesn't produce enough mana to keep me going, right? The 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 that thing does. The sword thing. Oh. Is this literally the first time this type of thing has happened? That is kind of funny. Never seen that happen before. You know what? In fairness, I don't think we've usually killed... Um... Well, no. I mean, we have killed things here. I should not be using bricks, is what the, the lesson of the day in this mod pack, where you have mobs that sometimes degrade into... You know. Yeah, not a good... I should I should swap that out. We should use like dark stone or something. Chiseled polished dark stone sound cool. And then this. And then this. And then just quick exchanger it real fast. Just cuz. Last thing we want is that repeating. That'll do. It's for me. Now we're cool. <laughs> All right. So yeah, I'm liking this little this this mod. I just need to figure out like what else there is to do in it. I mean, I know I'm sure it's like a work in progress kind of thing, but it looks cool so far. All right, let's try this one. It needs 300 mana, but I've got a healthy amount in my diamond, so let's give this a shot. You ready? Quartz, Ender, Ender. Scroll of Mental Displacement. Oh my goodness, what is going on? This is not a good thing. Okay, so I don't know what that was, but logging out and logging back in fixed it. <laughs> the impression from the flavor text of the book gave me the impression that it would let me be in like, kind of like a um, spectator style mode. Mm. I want to try this one out. Diamond, diamond, ender with cloth required. Um, 
So diamond, diamond, ender. What I've been looking for is powdered and then just do this. So diamond, diamond, ender. Okay. And this is proximity projection. Using the scroll grants the caster a weapon, which allows the caster to simultaneously teleport to and attack an entity they see at long range. Oh, crimson black keys of proximity projection. That's cool. Now I have to find it. Oh, look, it puts a little target on them. That is nifty. Oh, that's cool. Did you see how cool that was? Did you see how cool that is? Boom, boom, boom. That, that was cool. How cool was that? How cool was that? Right? I gotta try that again. And that is different, right? Boom. If you can see it, you can teleport to and attack it. Oh, that is cool. Oh, that is nifty. That is nifty. I wonder if I can, like, enchant it further and, like, mess with it a little. I, you know, I'm just curious. Dyer's a curious one. He just wonders how things work. Like, is this a tool? Can I enchant it with other things? I don't know. Looks like it, right? Right? Can I, like, disenchant what's on it? Where did I put that disenchantment dude? I don't know. Uh, like, if I did this in a book... Right? So that takes knockback off it? And then could I do like... Do I not have a mending book? I may not. Um, like what if I got unbreaking looting? That's kind of nifty. Sharpness mending? Sharpness... Oops, unbreaking. I think I have one. Don't I have an unbreaking? Oh, there it is. Yeah, unbreaking. And then went over to our... Mage Tower. Can I put these on here? Right, I'm gonna need my... Mana Wand. There it is. Four! Works for me. Oh, did I knock my spark off of it, maybe? Huh, when did that happen? Feels like it would have had to be a while ago. I mean, that's kind of cool, right? And then don't I have... Somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but don't I have... Where's my XP faucet? Or drain? What's it? What mod is that from? From mob grinding utils? XP tap. Can I XP tap you? I can. Ha ha ha. Cool. Let's go find something to teleport to. Because I just want to try this out now. No. Oh my goodness, this is cool. Look at like... It's the coolest thing ever! It's the coolest thing ever! Oh, you know what? My uh, Either my chest ran out, the, the sword that's in the chest ran out, uh, or it's not chunk loaded. I think it's the latter. Because when I went far enough away, I stopped gaining mana. I should I should set this thing up. I don't think it matters that it's in a ley line. Um, I feel like ley lines are nice if you want to passively regen mana. But, like, I don't think it makes a difference for the rituals. I might be wrong. Maybe it does. How cool is this, though? All right, let's wrap up the episode here. I'm going to flip through the book just a little bit, see if there's anything else I want to particularly discover about this mod, but it looks... There is some cool stuff in here. Gotta say, there is some neat, neat stuff for sure. Uh, but for now, Dial20 signed off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. I think there's a cool 
there's a couple cool weapons that we can try out um, that might take a little effort to get, aka a lot of mana. But, you know, we'll see what we want to do about that. I could easily probably set up like an auto crafting sword type system. I'll just find like some kind of item that looks like it has a lot of durability and then let it, you know, a lot of durability plus relatively cheap and then kind of go from there. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. But for now, Donald 20 sign off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We'll come back next time. For now, take it easy.